say happy Father's Day to all you dads out there. I hope you guys are having a great day. For today's video, we're talking about the Seiko SUN065. Before we get into the review, let's do a quick wrist check. I am rocking my Casio MTD1079. I have done a review on it, so check it out. But if you don't want to watch it, just know that it's a great watch. Very budget friendly. Going back to the Seiko. Now a disclaimer, I've only owned this watch for just over a week. So this isn't really a full review. This is just like letting you know how I think of it. Um, do I like it? Do I hate it? After one week of wear. Now let's start off with our first talking point, which is going to be a 360 view. This band is an aftermarket band from Strapcode. This is the Strapcode Bandolier. I did buy this watch used and it came with, the person I bought the watch from um, gave this to me essentially for free. I got a great deal on it. So just keep that in mind, this is not the stock band. But there you go, here's the side, which I absolutely love what they did here with that contrasting color right there. And they have it on the case back as well. Let's see if we can get a better look at that. Yeah, it just gives it a more dynamic look, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. And it ties in really good with that dial as well. And then for dimensions, let's go ahead and see what we're working with here. So for case diameter, without the crown, roughly 47 and a half. And then with the crown, let's see, about 50 and a half. Thickness about 15 millimeters and then lug to lug Let's see if I can get this right here around 52 millimeters with a band width of 24 millimeters so this is a beefy watch and I want to say that this is in the tuna family or at least on the forums and my Facebook groups everybody's been calling it a tuna so correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I want to say that this is like a branch off the tuna. So that being said, tunas are very chunky watches. They're called tunas because they look like tuna cans on your wrist. So keep that in mind. This is not a small watch by any means. For weight, so weight is going to be heavier, of course, because this Strapco Bandolier is no joke. It is very dense. But let's see what we're working with here. Because if you do get this watch, I highly recommend getting the bandolier because it looks so clean. But for uh, ounces, we're looking at eight and three quarter ounces, and then 250 grams. So that's that's a no joke on your wrist. You're definitely going to feel that. All right. So next talking point. Let's go over price, which this watch is not cheap, but you can find it for reasonable prices online, like I did. So MSRP is $750. However, I don't think it is still in, what's the word? I don't think Seiko is manufacturing these anymore. So any one that you find, I want to say is going to be used. Let me know in the comment section if I'm wrong, but I couldn't really find any brand new ones. On eBay, I spent $400 for the band and the bracelet, which the bracelet retails for about 175 So you can see that I, I think I really got a great deal on this one. Uh, on average, you're looking at about higher 400 so you know, 450 475 to 6, six to 650 um, without any um, aftermarket bracelets. So still fairly expensive, so just keep that in mind. But as long as you're willing to put in the time to research several sites like eBay and maybe Facebook Marketplace or whatever, I'm sure you'll be able to negotiate a better deal. Now let's talk about some functions and features about this watch. Straight off the bat, you can tell that it is a GMT watch as indicated by the GMT hour hand there, the orange hand. Now if you read the manual, it tells you that you can use the GMT hand for two separate purposes, either to track another time zone or to monitor AM or PM. I use it to indicate AM or PM because if you didn't know the GMT hour hand moves at half the speed of the regular hour hand. So this 
dial for GMT is 24 hours vice 12 hours. So if the hour hand is on the right hand side of the dial, that means it's AM, and then if it's on the right hand, or sorry, on the left hand side, it is PM. So that's how I use it, but you can use it however you want. And I just think it's cool that it serves as a dual purpose function. You also have this great unidirectional 120 click bezel. And if you're familiar with tunas, you've got this awesome shroud right here to protect it. I used to complain because I thought that these got in the way, especially if you were a diver and you were wearing a lot of dive gear. But turns out that that is for a specific purpose. It's so that you set the bezel where you want it, then you dive and there it decreases the risk of the dial accidentally being turned. And you know, that, that made sense to me when it was described to me like that. So I do very much like this, even just as a design feature too, like a design aesthetic. I really do like how that looks. Uh, did we cover the date window? If we didn't, there's the date window. Uh, the background is the same color as the dial, so some people might like that uh, or hate it because it makes it harder to see. Uh, I haven't had any issues with it. The white numbers do come out quite clearly, but if you are um, hard of vision, then it might prove some issues for you. And then going to the main function or feature, this button right here is your charge indicating button. So how this watch does that is it uses the second hand to show you how much power is left in the reserve. And it does that by either moving, so you hit the button and the second hand will either advance to the 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 30 seconds. 5 seconds, if the second hand advances 5 seconds, then it means that there is approximately one, like just over one day of charge remaining. If it advances 10 seconds, it means there's approximately one week of charge remaining. 20 seconds means approximately over one month, and 30 seconds means approximately over six months. So there's no like definitive time of power left, it's just all approximate. So if it only advances five seconds, then that means that that's a good indication that you need to, you know, put it on and walk around or just sit on your couch and shake it side to side to charge up the watch. So we'll go ahead and show you. We're gonna wait till it gets to the 30, 30 mark or the six o'clock position because uh, I'll explain it to you later. I got to focus here. So at the six o'clock, we'll push the button. Oh no, fail. So I had it screwed down. It's a screw down button. And that's for dive purposes. You keep it screwed down to protect it. So that way you don't get any water in it. Um, so we'll, we'll do it at the nine o'clock. So nine o'clock, push it. And then the second hand will advance 30 seconds for me because I, you know, I always keep it at a full charge and it's going to stay there until actual time catches back up to it. So it's basically going to just sit here for 30 seconds. If it only advanced 20 seconds and it would sit there for 20 seconds and so on and so forth. The reason why I do it at only the um, 12, three, six or nine o'clock position is because it's just easier to read for me, like mentally, you know, if, if you did it like in between one of the indices, then, it's not difficult, but it's just a little bit more complicated to calculate mentally how many seconds advanced. And then once you're done, you just tighten it back up. So here we go. Now this is one thing that I have an issue with. The screw down button, the portion that is jimped or textured for you to grab onto is kind of difficult to grab. So, you know, you'll find that you'll be sitting there for a couple seconds trying to break that seal to turn it. So my recommendation is to not ever tighten it more than you need to. At the second you feel a little bit of resistance, just let it go. Because, you know, look at that. You've probably got like less than a millimeter of gripping surface to really grab onto and turn it. Yeah, so um, another thing is for the charge, basically... You just sit here and you know if you don't want to wear it and you want to charge it just shake it like this back to back and you will hear the rotor in there moving side to side or you know it's basically spinning and it's a pretty hefty rotor you will feel it and you can hear it let's let's go ahead and see if you can hear it hopefully the, the uh, microphone is picking that up but it is it's a significant 
you know, weighted rotor. So, you know, you, some people might not be a fan of that, but just keep in mind, you will feel it moving side to side. Uh, I like it. I think it's cool. Like, this is a great little fidget toy for me because I'm the kind of person that I always have to be playing around with something. You know, if I got a pen in my hand, I'm, I'm flipping the pen. This is just great. If I'm sitting at the desk, I'll take it off and I'll just sit there and charge it. And it gives me a real great sense of satisfaction because I feel like I'm, I'm doing something with my watch. I'm actively giving it energy. But that's also a negative too, and we'll talk about that later on. All right, so illumination here. You can see on the screen right now what it looks like in a dark room. You've got that Seiko Lumabrite, which is so wonderful, absolutely beautiful. I, you, I cannot complain about Lumabrite. Reading the manual, Lumabrite does fade away over time. The more that it gets exposed to light, each time it's going to be slightly less bright than it was the first time. But with all of my Seiko watches, and I've got a bunch, I've had no issues with illumination throughout the night. Next talking point is visibility. I think they did a great job with that on this watch. So with the GMT hand, you've got that orange frame. And it's not like a solid hand, so it doesn't confuse you for the main hour hand. Some of you might not have an issue with that. I do with my other dive watches where they've got that solid orange hand to indicate depth. So I'm constantly confusing it for the main hour hand. And you know, I'm a, I'm a simple guy, so I could be easily confused, but I am never confused in this watch because I can clearly tell which one is the GMT hand and which one is the hour hand. Another thing they did great with visibility is the presentation of the indices, which if you can see, they pop out. They're not just painted on like they are on this Casio but they are 3D solid things, solid objects on the dial. And it gives the look such a great, like dynamic display because any angle that you look at it, the watch is gonna look slightly different. And it's so fun and such a great looking watch and practical for actual divers. I, I imagine that this would be a great display to see underwater. Going over button and crown quality, You've got the screw down button and the screw down crown and the great thing about the crown is you've got this red line which hopefully you can see it. So right there if you're seeing red then it's clearly visible that the crown is not screwed in. So definitely do not go underwater with your button or your crown not fully locked. But still great quality, um, feels really solid, there's no play and yeah that's all I got to say for that. So for my last talking point, it's my overall thoughts. Overall, this is a fantastic watch. From the presentation to the overall build quality, it's just 10 out of 10. The only thing that I'm not a huge fan of is the kinetic movement, and there's nothing wrong with it. It's just something that is always in the back of my head. I'm always thinking, hey, do I need to put this watch on and take it out for a walk like a dog? Because I never want to let the battery die but with a six month power reserve that's not really an issue because that's plenty of time for me to regularly rotate this into my um, I guess EDC if you want to call it that um, keep in mind though that charging this watch to a full charge is a lengthy process so it's 250 shakes like this in order to get it to one day and then 500 to two days and so on and so forth. So if we take 250 shakes as the standard for one day to get it to a six month charge, that's approximately six hours of just sitting there and shaking it like that. So unlike an automatic watch where all you have to do is wind the dial and you know charge it, this one will take some time. But in the grand scheme of things, is it that big of a deal? I mean, if this is like one of your few watches in your collection, then you won't really have an issue. As long as you're regularly wearing it, then it's not a big deal. But overall, I absolutely love it, and I'm definitely going to keep this one. I, I'm kind of a guy that rotates through watches very quickly, but the fact that this one is going to be a, a steady member in my daily rotation um, speaks a lot for the, the quality of this watch. So that's like all i got to say for now. I will definitely revisit this review again in either a month or you know a few months if my 
opinions change on it, which I, I highly doubt that it will. So anyways, I hope that this video helps you with your next watch purchase. Um, and I do definitely recommend getting one of these if you do get a good price online because I don't think they're still being manufactured. So what, what is out there in the market is what's out there. And then, you know, once it's gone, unless Seiko decides to reissue it, then it's gone forever. So anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and make sure to subscribe so you stay up to date as soon as my next video gets published. And thanks for watching. And again, happy Father's Day. All right, bye.